In March of 2023, a Colorado woman's faint and dizzy state developed into a severe headache during the course of several hospitalizations, which ultimately ended in her death. 43-year-old Angela Craig's health began declining on the 6th of March in the city of Aurora when she became lightheaded after a morning workout. After that, she made her initial visit to Parker Adventist Hospital after being brought there by her dentist husband, James Tolliver Craig, aged 45. What followed was two weeks of trips to the hospital in search of medical attention for Angela, who was only getting worse. James told his female office manager from work that he didn't think his wife was going to make it. On Angela's third visit to the hospital, she suffered a severe seizure, which led to her rapid decline. She was pronounced brain dead on March the 18th and was subsequently taken off life support. Her husband's friends and colleagues reportedly suspected that he played a role in the woman's sudden and unexplained death. The office manager told police that before Angela's first trip to the hospital, the couple had consumed a pre-workout protein shake that James had concocted. In Angela's last days, James had allegedly been anticipating the delivery of a personal package to his office, which he insisted should not be opened by anyone but him. After finding the package already opened, the office manager saw a canister with a biohazard sticker labeled potassium cyanide. She searched for it online and discovered that if the substance is ingested, a person could experience nausea, vomiting, and low blood pressure, which were the exact symptoms Angela had suffered leading up to her death. When James's business partner found out about this, he confronted the man. James admitted to purchasing the hazardous substance, but claimed it had been at Angela's request. On March the 16th, James told a case worker from Child Protective Services that his wife's depression had skyrocketed after he asked for a divorce three months earlier. He said that he'd fulfilled her wishes by facilitating her death. When law enforcement investigated, James's claims were found to be unsubstantiated. Additionally, witnesses told investigators that the pair had been having marital problems. According to Angela's sister, the 23-year marriage had always been tumultuous. James allegedly had multiple affairs, developed an addiction to adult films, and had even drugged his wife years prior. Further investigation uncovered his intimate relation with another woman, a Texas orthodontist whom he'd arranged to be flown to Colorado at the time of his wife's hospitalization. The Aurora Police Department's Major Crimes Homicide Unit determined that the dentist had, in fact, poisoned his wife. He was arrested on March the 19th and was held without bond. He was formally charged with first-degree murder four days later. Family and friends of the couple were reportedly devastated and shocked following Angela's death and the revelation of James's involvement. Number 27. Barton Corbin, law enforcement in Gwinnett County, Georgia, received a call at around 7.30 a.m. on December the 4th of 2004. 33-year-old Jennifer Corbin had been found dead at her Buford residence. First responders found a 38 caliber pistol tucked into her bedding, as well as a nearly empty glass of wine next to a bottle on the nightstand. Her husband, dentist Barton Corbin, just filed for divorce and sued for custody of their sons five days prior. Their separation documents had been tucked underneath Jennifer's lifeless body. A homicide investigator reportedly found certain aspects of the crime scene to be unusual and said it was hard to believe that a mother would perform such a self-destructive act of her own accord, especially with her children in the house. A medical examiner found no alcohol in Jennifer's system, removing the possibility that a night of heavy drinking had led to her death. Although Barton had the alibi of being out with friends at the time of Jennifer's death, authorities later determined that he'd been at the house during the estimated time of Jennifer's death, which was between 2 and 3 a.m. While a case against Barton was being built, investigators received a tip from a woman claiming that her daughter's death in 1990 occurred under very similar circumstances as Jennifer's. Barton and the woman's late daughter, Dorothy Dolly Hearn, were classmates who sparked up a relationship. Hearn was found dead in her apartment from a gunshot wound to the head after rejecting Barton's marriage proposal. Upon further investigation, it was concluded that both women had been killed. Barton was arrested for Hearn's murder 
on December the 22nd of 2004. Two weeks later, the 40-year-old was charged with his wife's murder as well. On September the 15th of 2006, he pleaded guilty to two counts of malice murder and was sentenced to two life terms to be served simultaneously. Number 26, Bobby Nichols. At a home in South Tyler, Texas, an argument between a couple ended with a fatal shooting on the night of June the 29th of 2012. In the middle of the dispute with his wife, retired dentist Bobby Nichols, at the time in his mid-70s, went out to his car, retrieved a gun, and stormed back inside. When the argument escalated, he fired two shots, killing 71-year-old Rosalind Nichols. Bobby then called 911 and said that he'd shot his wife and needed an ambulance at the Allen Avenue home. He was booked into jail before being released on a $750,000 bond. He subsequently violated the bond by purchasing alcohol on multiple occasions. As he entered the Smith County Courthouse before his trial in July, Bobby was asked by a local media outlet if he was feeling okay, to which he responded, not really, I killed my wife. During the court proceedings, while he was on the stand, he said that it wasn't his intention to kill Rosalind and that he'd only meant to scare her. After a week-long trial, the man was found guilty and ordered to serve at least 10 years in prison before being eligible for parole. Number 25. Lionel Googe French dentist Lionel Googe was said to have promised his patients celebrity smiles, but eventually caused many of them to develop serious dental problems. Googe, together with his father, who was also a dentist, saw up to 70 people per day between 2006 and 2012. During the course of those six years, the men's dental work killed the nerves of upwards of 3,900 healthy teeth. The procedures were apparently rushed and botched and would often include pointless root canal treatment. One 18-year-old female went to Googe for a minor tooth enamel initial and ended up losing 24 of her healthy teeth. Many of his patients suffered from chronic pain and infections that significantly contributed to a decline in their quality of life. Concurrently, the dentist was becoming incredibly wealthy. He drove a Ferrari, purchased a yacht, collected paintings by Andy Warhol, and owned multiple residences he was referred to as the wealthiest dentist in France. In one 2010 ranking, prosecutors sought the maximum sentence for Googe, in addition to a fine of over $400,000. He and his father were taken into custody on September the 8th of 2022, and after a six-week trial, were struck from the dental register. They were found guilty of inflicting violence leading to mutilation or a permanent disability on 327 patients. 42-year-old Googe was given an eight-year prison sentence while his father, aged 70, was given a five-year term. Number 24, Bethaniel Jefferson. On January the 7th of 2016, a routine dental visit for a preschooler's decayed tooth would later leave her unable to walk, talk, or feed herself. Three hours into Nevaeh Hall's visit to Diamond Dental Practice in Houston, Texas, her oxygen level and temperature fell dramatically and she suffered a seizure. It wasn't until four hours later that dentist Bethaniel Jefferson called for medical assistance. Months later in July, the dentist, who was in her late 30s, turned herself into the Montgomery County Jail after she was accused of causing the child to suffer brain damage during the procedure. She was subsequently released on a $50,000 bond. In November of that year, the woman had her license revoked by the Texas Dental Board. In the subsequent months, she was indicted on charges of intentionally and knowingly by omission, causing serious bodily injury to a child by failing to seek and provide adequate medical attention. Nevaeh was improperly restrained and sedated during her treatment, according to a release from the family's attorney. It was also alleged that the girl had been kept away from her mother while she was having seizures. Her health continued to decline throughout the years, and she reportedly needed 24-hour care because of her severe disabilities. On September the 22nd of 2022, the 269th State District Court in Houston found Johnson liable for Nevaeh's health problems due to negligence. 
Damages were tallied at a reported $95.5 million. However, the family ultimately collected a much smaller sum, as Jefferson's malpractice insurance covered only a fraction of the amount. The dentist was facing life in prison if convicted of a first-degree felony charge. The mother of the victim said that she was glad they'd gone through with the trial, even though her daughter wouldn't be receiving the money. She added that she thought Jefferson should spend the rest of her life behind bars. Number 23. Paul Carey On February the 16th of 2022, Long Island dentist Paul Carey was arrested after he was caught storing an array of privately made firearms inside his Massapequa home. Suspicions began to arise when Carey's 33-year-old secretary heard him racking a shotgun in the office. According to Nassau County Police Commissioner Paul Ryder, the secretary ran outside and called 911 after the 62-year-old appeared agitated and intoxicated while wielding a gun. Law enforcement responded and took Carey into custody, then raided his home. 20 illegal long guns were discovered, 18 of which were untraceable ghost guns. Commissioner Ryder said that the suspect had acquired separate pieces through the mail and assembled a collection of illegal, unlicensed firearms. Additionally, over 60 high-capacity magazines, silencers, and an estimated 3,000 rounds of ammunition were recovered. Several counts of criminal possession of a weapon were filed against the dentist. The man had a criminal history, including for menacing, driving under the influence, reckless endangerment, and leaving the scene of an accident. He pleaded not guilty in July of 2022 and was facing up to 25 years in prison if convicted. Number 22. Andrew Heinisch on June the 9th of 2018 at the Minnehaha County Jail in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, a female inmate told jail staff that she was touched inappropriately by Dr. Andrew Heinisch, the dentist who was based in Worthington, Minnesota, had been a subcontractor with Miami-based Armor Correctional Health Services since March of 2016. Investigators spoke with current and former inmates who'd been treated by Heinisch on the same day as the first complaint Another woman reported a similar incident during which he allegedly started massaging her neck and started to move his hands down her body. A third allegation was made by a former patient who said she felt uncomfortable and really shaken up following her exam with Heinisch. A fourth woman purportedly received an unsolicited massage and comments about her lips and tattoos, which caused her to leave her dental appointment feeling off. Heinisch turned himself in after a warrant for his arrest was issued. He subsequently posted a cash bond of $10,000. The man was facing several felony and misdemeanor charges. His Minnesota dental license was initially revoked, but it was reinstated in September after the charges against him were dismissed and his case file was terminated. All but one of the alleged victims had reportedly chosen not to testify. The sole testimony of one victim wasn't sufficient evidence, and there were no cameras in the jail's medical examination rooms, nor additional witnesses to support a case. Number 21. Valbona Yezirash 45-year-old Valbona Yezirash from White Plains, New York, was a practicing dentist from November of 2012 until August of 2013, when some of her patients started returning with complaints. As part of her practice, Yezirash who reportedly referred to herself as Dr. Val, diagnosed various patients, took x-rays, injected anesthetics, and performed complicated dental procedures including extractions and root canals. However, most of the surgeries she performed ultimately resulted in infection and continued pain for her patients. The complaints eventually reached Yezhiraj's employer, Dr. Jeffrey Schoengold, resulted in the woman's termination. She then allegedly tried to steal $20,000 from the clinic. Law enforcement got involved and it was determined that Yezhiraj was only the office manager for Schoengold's dental practice. When Schoengold was away, the woman would allegedly slip on a lab coat, schedule patients and work on their teeth, despite not having a license to practice. The suspect was arrested and arraigned on April the 16th of 2015. She claimed that she'd been trained in her home country of Albania, but according to prosecutors, she was neither trained nor licensed in the US. For the duration of her case, she was barred from working in dentistry. She pleaded not guilty to charges of assault in a second and third degree, reckless endangerment, unauthorized practice, and attempted grand larceny. 
she was released on her own recognizance and was required to pay an additional $10,000 in bail money at her next court appearance. If convicted, Yajiraz faced up to seven years in prison. Number 20, Lona Demetria Bibbs. In the wake of a shooting that stemmed from road rage in December of 2018, a 44-year-old pediatric dentist from Newnan, Georgia, faced criminal charges. Prior to the incident in question, which took place on November the 25th of that year, dentist Lona Demetria Bibbs was allegedly driving her Cadillac Escalade aggressively down Interstate 85. A red passenger car almost lost control after Bibbs purportedly brake-checked them. A couple traveling in a Dodge Avenger witnessed the traffic altercation and proceeded to follow Bibbs. When they caught up to the woman at an intersection, the passenger in the Dodge rolled down his window and told Bibbs someone was going to get killed because of her dangerous driving. The woman responded with racial slurs and threats, telling the man to get out of the car so she could put a bullet in his head. The heated confrontation ended when the couple drove away to a nearby store while Bibbs drove to her office on Newnan Crossing Boulevard. She called her husband, Keith Walker, because she knew that he had a gun. As the other couple were loading items into their car at PetSmart, Bibbs's Cadillac and Walker's Ford F-250 pickup pulled up, blocking their Dodge Avenger in. Their argument resumed, then escalated into a physical fight. Walker drew his gun while trying to defuse the situation. The other man subsequently fired his own gun, twice hitting Walker's arm and chest. The fight was brought to an end when an off-duty Fayette County deputy intervened and took possession of the gun that was fired. Walker and Bibbs were transported to Grady Memorial Hospital. The former was slated to face charges after his recovery. Eight days later, on December the 3rd, Bibbs turned herself into Coweta County Jail and was charged with aggravated assault, making threats, battery, and simple assault. She was released the same day on a $25,000 bond. Charges against the other couple hadn't been filed as of the latest updates. Authorities were investigating the matter further in an attempt to track down the passenger car involved in the initial incident on the interstate. Number 19. Eddie Char Orobic. Florida man Joseph Sivak was brutally assaulted after going for a walk with his wife on the Harbor Hills Golf Course in Lady Lake on the last day of April in 2023. Sivak was approached by 52-year-old dentist Eddie Char Orobic, who was golfing with his son. Orobic told him he wasn't supposed to walk along the path, which was apparently reserved for golf carts. The victim later told Fox 35 that Orobic came up to them really fast, screaming and swearing. An argument ensued between the two men before Orobic spat on Sivak's face and subsequently beat him with both his fists and a golf club. Sivak reportedly suffered broken ribs, a fractured cheekbone, a ripped earlobe, and several bruises and cuts. Police officers found the victim covered in blood and unable to speak. Orobic was arrested and booked at the Lake County Jail on a felony charge of aggravated battery. He posted a $5,000 bond and was released. Three days later, on May the 3rd, he entered a plea of not guilty. A lieutenant with the Lake County Sheriff's Office said that the victim's condition could have been much, much worse had he been struck with the golf club in the wrong place. Number 18. Temistocles Barbosa Frieri. A group of illegal poachers who were accused of killing thousands of endangered animals in the northwestern state of Acre in Brazil was busted by authorities in July of 2019. Brazilian law enforcement monitored the group, wiretapping their cell phones and collecting pictures and videos of the animals they targeted, which included eight jaguars, 13 capybaras, 10 hounds and two deer. Within a period of three months, 11 poaching incidents occurred before the police arrested seven men, including dentist Temistocles Barbosa Freire, who'd allegedly slaughtered at least a thousand jaguars since 1987. After further investigation, only five of his illegal hunts were confirmed. Freire and four other suspects were ordered to pay fines and spend between six to 36 months in custody, according to court records. The other men were acquitted. Number 17, Barry Arnold. In August of 2021, a 70-year-old dentist from Long Island was accused of exchanging painkillers for intercourse multiple times over a four-year span 
Barry Arnold from Williston Park had been a licensed dentist in the state of New York since 1975. According to prosecutors, Arnold had given out prescriptions to at least six women who weren't his patients between October of 2016 and August of 2020. He would reportedly meet them after hours at his office. After receiving the prescriptions, which weren't intended for medical use, the women would compensate the dentist with intimate favors. The man also allegedly used crack cocaine during these secret encounters. Arnold was arrested and arraigned at the Federal Eastern District Court of New York. He was charged with 28 counts of distribution of controlled substances. He entered a plea of not guilty and was released on a $200,000 bond with home detention and electronic monitoring. The man was ordered to surrender his DEA registration number, which allowed him to give out prescriptions. He was still allowed to practice as a dentist, but was barred from carrying out oral surgery or administering nitrous oxide. Number 60. Krista Siocic. For seven years leading up to her arrest in 2018, Georgia woman Krista Siocic had been posing as a dentist in an illegal operation, ran alongside her husband, John, a former Paulding County Sheriff's deputy. Siocic ran county dental providers, which claimed that it was a service organization that didn't practice dentistry, but handled the business aspects while connecting dentists and patients. The issue was that when dentists weren't available, Siocic, who didn't have the required license, took it upon herself to do the work. Not only that, but she also wrote fraudulent prescriptions. Dozens of accusers came forward, some with horrifying stories. One of Siocic's patients claimed to have developed a tennis ball-sized infection that required a trip to the hospital after she had extracted two of his teeth. Another claimed that he had to glue his crown on every morning because of her husband's influence. Siocic was able to evade justice and carry on with her illegal practices. In December of 2018, the Siocics were indicted under Georgia's Racketeering Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act. The trial is ongoing and they face accusations in a 52-count criminal indictment. Number 15. Jacobus Van Nierop In April of 2016, Dutchman Jacobus Van Nierop dubbed by the media as the dentist of horror, was jailed for eight years in France. His practice had operated out of the small, central town of Chateau Chinon, where Van Nierop reportedly took pleasure in mutilating the mouths of roughly 120 patients. One of them claimed that he'd ruined her life after filing her teeth down. A pensioner stated Van Nierop had left flesh hanging everywhere after an extraction. Another patient was left gushing blood for three days after he'd pulled eight of her teeth in one sitting. More of his horrendous practices meant to deliberately inflict pain included breaking patients' jaws, pulling out healthy teeth and leaving abscesses untreated. After being questioned by the police in 2013, the dentist had fled to a small town in New Brunswick, Canada, from where he was eventually extradited on an international warrant. At his trial, Van Neurop, whose defense argued had psychological problems, admitted responsibility while also claiming that he wasn't interested in people and didn't remember his patients' names. Number 14. Enrique Sanabria Gravia and Adriana Gutierrez Hoyas. In 2019, Florida couple Enrique Sanabria Gravia and his wife Adriana Gutierrez Hoyas were arrested for running an illegal dental practice out of their garage. The couple, both in their late 40s, had performed extractions, braces, and crowns for several years. Patients would wait in the living room prior to being escorted to the garage, where the dentistry equipment was held. The patients were reported as undocumented immigrants of Hispanic descent. The only way to get an appointment was for potential patients to call Gravia, ask for a cleaning in Spanish, and say who recommended them. The authorities received a tip about the illegal operation and, in February, an undercover detective arrived at the address. The practice, Enrique Dentistry, didn't have medical insurance and hadn't been paying taxes. The couple was arrested on charges of practicing dentistry without a license and conspiracy to commit a felony. Number 13. Clara Suarez Following their marriage in 1992, dentist Clara Suarez and her orthodontist husband, David Lynn Harris, owned and operated a chain of offices. Through their successful business, the Texas couple enjoyed an upscale home and lifestyle. They raised three children, twin boys and Harris's daughter from a previous marriage. 
In 2002, Suarez, who at one point was named Mrs. Columbia Houston, came to suspect that Harris was having an affair. She hired a private investigator and in July of 2002, was notified that her husband and his former receptionist, Gail Bridges, were at a hotel together with her teenage stepdaughter, Lindsay, as a passenger in her Mercedes-Benz sedan, Suarez went to the hotel to confront them. She attacked Bridges and hotel employees escorted Suarez back to her car. As the adulterous couple came out, Suarez fatally struck Harris with her Mercedes. Her defense would later claim that she hadn't seen him, and a medical examiner stated that there was only one conclusive tire mark on the body. However, Lindsay and other eyewitnesses reported Suarez had run him over three times, which supported the idea that she'd meant to harm him. A video recorded by the detective agency she'd hired to spy on Harris showed her circling the block three times, but the victim's body wasn't clearly distinguishable in the footage. The defense was unable to prove Suarez had run Harris over only once. She was found guilty of murder and given 20 years, the maximum sentence for a crime of passion, which the jury deemed it to have been. Number 12. Laurel Eich on May the 4th of 2021, deputies from Reno, Nevada responded to a burglar alarm at a dentist cabinet on Sun Valley Boulevard, where they found a broken back window and a disturbed cash drawer. Over $20,000 in cash and checks were stolen. The investigation led the authorities to 42-year-old Laurel Ike, who'd worked as a dental assistant at the cabinet. Following her arrest on July the 14th, Ike made one gruesome revelation. Even though she wasn't a licensed dentist, she at one point pulled 13 teeth from a patient using Anastasia from the office. She claimed to have performed the extractions on her own time, but didn't reveal the patient's identity. Aside from performing surgery on another without a license, Ike was charged with burglary of a business and grand larceny, as well as three counts of violating probation and one misdemeanor for conspiracy to commit burglary. Number 11. Alberto Grappiera In 2020, a complaint was registered with the Florida Department of Health after Miami-based dentist Alberto Graupira left part of a hand file inside a patient's mouth. The patient, only identified as JV, had opted for a root canal to try and save the tooth after Graupira had proposed extraction and an implant. The patient became upset during the procedure and told the dentist he wanted a second opinion. Graupera sealed the incomplete root canal but failed to notify JV that a piece of hand file had broken off and was still inside. An endodontist later found the fragment and JV informed the authorities, but it's unclear what disciplinary action Graupera faced in the aftermath. Number 10. Bert Franklin in July of 2016, Oklahoma woman Roxanne Randall found her son, Lincoln, unresponsive and took him to a hospital. The 19-month-old was in critical condition and had to be airlifted to a medical facility in Tulsa. His eyes were bleeding as a consequence of two skull fractures, which one doctor described as the worst they'd ever seen. The authorities had been informed as the injuries were deemed too severe to have occurred as the result of a fall and staff concluded they were consistent with abuse. Lincoln would later be pronounced dead. Bert Franklin, a respectable Tulsa dentist and a married father of four, had secretly started seeing Randall, a former patient, at his practice for over a year. He deceived her that he was in the process of getting a divorce when they'd begun dating. Franklin had spent the night at Randall's home when her son had sustained the fatal injuries. Security footage from a camera in the kitchen would show Franklin coming down the stairs with Lincoln in his arms alert and awake. He then walked out of view, but not completely. He was captured, kicking and throwing something in the living room. Corresponding with his actions, Randall heard a loud thud and came downstairs, but was assured by Franklin that it was just a dog and that everything was all right. The camera then captured Franklin carrying Lincoln's limp body back into the kitchen and casually grabbing a slice of pizza. He was arrested following inconsistencies in his police interview and charged with murder. Oklahoma City investigators believe that Franklin had slammed Lincoln into the ground or another hard surface head first. It was subsequently revealed that Franklin hated the boy's biological father whom he'd threatened to skin and mutilate. His hatred, as he confessed to friends, 
was exacerbated by Lincoln's likeness to him. With his murder trial fast approaching, there was evidence that Franklin had tried orchestrating a hit on Randall from prison, presumably suspecting she'd be able to incriminate him. He was found guilty of murder as well as of soliciting murder and sentenced to life without parole. It also emerged that his professional career was just as insidious as his personal life. A number of patients revealed that it was actually Franklin's dental assistant, Paige Maples, who'd done most of their work. She'd repaired at least one patient's denture and also wrote prescriptions. Maples pled guilty in 2017 and received a suspended five-year sentence for unlawful practice of dentistry, had to surrender her assistant permit and never work in dentistry again. Number nine, Alexandria Pierce Baddeley. In 2021, out of pandemic-related fears, 29-year-old Alexandria Pierce Baddeley decided to treat a large abscess in her mouth herself. Even though she didn't have the proper medical training, her decision to act as her own dentist proved fatal. Pierce Baddeley feared catching the COVID-19 virus due to previous medical conditions that included pneumonia, sepsis, and hepatitis. She took pain medication and applied a turmeric paste to the affected area. The mother of one inadvertently overdosed on painkillers, which she'd taken with a considerable amount of alcohol. Pierce Baddeley's mother went to her home and found her lifeless body lying on the bed. The night of her death, Pierce Baddeley's boyfriend had ended their relationship. Hours before slipping into unconsciousness, she'd sent him a picture of her medication saying, in 20 minutes, I won't be able to move. While it was initially suspected she'd taken her own life, the overdose was ultimately deemed accidental, a fatal consequence of her treating the painful abscesses on her own. Number eight, Colin Howell. On May the 19th of 1991, the bodies of Leslie Howell and Trevor Buchanan, both in their early 30s, were found in Castle Rock, Northern Ireland, in a fume-filled car. He was slumped in the front seat while she was in the back, clasping pictures of her children with headphones on that were playing religious songs. Neither could be saved, and the authorities concluded they'd agreed to if after finding out their respective spouses were having an affair. Leslie's husband, Colin, had been secretly seeing Hazel Buchanan, a Sunday school teacher who'd fallen for his charms as a lay preacher. Colin was a dentist, and to avoid detection, they'd often consume the tryst at his office, sometimes in the dental chair. After their spouse's deaths, they openly became a couple, but it only lasted a few years before they both remarried. In 1998, Colin confessed to his second wife that he'd killed Leslie as well as his mistress's husband, but the woman didn't inform the authorities when he'd threatened to Colin had run a hose pipe from the exhaust of his car and stuck it into Leslie's mouth as she slept. When she awoke, he suppressed her breathing with a cushion. Trevor had already been drugged by Hazel, with tranquilizers crushed in a tuna sandwich when Colin arrived at their home with his wife's body in the trunk. After a brief scuffle, he stuck the hose pipe into Trevor's mouth as well, killing him. He drove their bodies to a property owned by Leslie's father, set the scene and then fled. In the years that followed, Colin lost a fortune on a scam that tricked him. Yamashita's gold, an unconfirmed World War II treasure, had been found and needed to be extracted out of tunnels in the Philippines. Then his eldest son died in an accident. A deeply religious man, he believed that God was punishing him and confessed the killings to his church elders, who convinced him to go to the police. In 2010, he pled guilty and was sentenced to a minimum of 21 years in prison, dubbed by the media as the Driller Killer. He gave evidence condemning Hazel as well. She claimed to have been acting under duress and that Colin had all the power, but was ultimately sentenced to a minimum of 18 years. In May of 2011, Colin also pled to indecently assaulting nine female patients while they were sedated in his dental chair. Number seven, James Ryan. A dental surgeon from Montgomery County, Maryland, was arrested by local police as he walked into work at Evolution Oral Surgery in Germantown on March the 22nd of 2022. During a press conference later that day, the authorities detailed how they'd uncovered evidence that Dr. James Riley had been directly involved in the death of his girlfriend and former patient, Sarah Harris. The latter had passed away on January the 26th after overdosing on prescription drugs that Ryan had provided. The two had first met when 25-year-old Harris went to Evolution Oral Surgery in order to have her wisdom tooth removed. Following the surgical procedure, Ryan had offered her a job and shortly thereafter they started dating. 
Detectives recovered text messages shared between the couple that ultimately proved vital in their effort to understand what had precipitated the young woman's untimely passing. Investigators found several phone conversations in which Harris had asked for various medications including ketamine, diazepam and propofol, none of which she had a legitimate medical reason for using. Ryan not only gave her the drugs she'd requested but also allegedly instructed her on how to use them properly and even increased the potency of their effects. The police reported that Harris had been living with Ryan at his home in Clarksburg and it was also gleaned from their text messages that the young woman had overdosed on another occasion prior to her death. Ryan was ultimately charged with 10 counts including second degree murder and he was held in custody without bond while awaiting his case's legal proceedings. Number 6. Scott Charmolly After Scott Charmolly had sold Jackson Family Dentistry in 2019, the practice's new owner quickly realized that something wasn't right about the business's records. According to Charmolly's files, the dentist who operated out of Grafton, Wisconsin, had performed more than 30 crown procedures for every 100 patients, an exorbitant rate that reportedly exceeded the state average roughly fivefold. The new business owner reported the suspiciously high numbers to the authorities, prompting an extensive investigation into Charmolly's activities while at the helm of Jackson Family Dentistry. It subsequently emerged that the former dentist had regularly falsified his patients' medical records and x-ray results in order to convince them that they needed unnecessary tooth fillings. In many cases, 61-year-old Charmolly had intentionally damaged or drilled holes in patients' teeth so that he could charge them considerable fees to repair them. The Washington Post reported that during a 20-month period from January of 2018 to August of 2019, Charmolly had performed over 1,600 fraudulent crown installations, which brought in millions of dollars to his practice. By the end of 2020, the dentist had an estimated net worth of $6.8 million, largely due to the money he'd obtained through his predatory and deceptive scheme. In March of 2022, it was reported that Charmolly had been convicted on five counts of healthcare fraud and two counts of making a false statement. He also became the subject of a malpractice lawsuit filed by nearly 100 of his former patients. The civil litigation was reportedly put on hold pending Charmolly's criminal sentencing, which was scheduled for June of 2022. Number 5. Harley Rodriguez Bonilla on February the 21st of 2020, undercover officers in Texas made an appointment to see a dentist named Harley Rodriguez Bonilla, who was suspected of operating his practice without a license. Consequently, an investigator posing as a customer went to Rodriguez Bonilla's office, which was located inside the man's townhome. The officer waited in the living room until an assistant took them upstairs. The 41-year-old dentist had reportedly outfitted one of his bedrooms with an array of professional dental equipment and an examination table. Shortly after the sting operation, which had been disguised as an appointment for one of the officers to get a set of dentures fitted, Rodriguez Bonilla was taken into custody and charged with practicing unlicensed dentistry. Investigators spoke with one of the man's patients who claimed to have been charged $3,800 for the fitting of upper and lower veneers. Once in police custody, Rodriguez Bonilla confessed to also performing unlicensed dental work in California and Florida. His bond was reportedly set at $25,000. Number 4. Donald Dinello Jr. In March of 2013, it was reported that Donald Dinello Jr., a dentist at Oral Surgery Associates in Dauphin County, Pennsylvania, had been taken into the custody of state narcotics agents. The 45-year-old's arrest followed an extensive investigation by the State Attorney General's Office. A grand jury ultimately determined that Dinello had forged prescriptions for various narcotic substances and stolen thousands of dollars from his own dental practice without his business partner's knowledge. Between 2008 and 2012, the dentist had written at least 88 fraudulent pain medication prescriptions for fictitious patients. In actuality, Dinello allegedly abused the powerful drugs himself, which was why he'd neglected to record the scripts as required by law. Furthermore, Dinello was accused of stealing dental supplies from Oral Surgery Associates, which he then sold at a discount rate to another dental office where he'd secretly been working. The grand jury found that the duplicitous dentist had deposited roughly $55,000 of the proceeds from his dental supply sales into his personal bank accounts. Upon his arrest, Dinello was charged with 
several offences, including falsely prescribing a controlled substance and theft. In July of 2014, he was sentenced to 15 to 30 months in county prison, while also being ordered to pay approximately $84,000 in restitution to his former business partner. Number 3. Robert Hofstetter New Jersey dentist Robert Hofstetter, aged 69, was arrested in 2018 after a female employee discovered a camera hidden inside the restroom at his office in Sewell. The man had reportedly placed a miniature pinhole camera in a cardboard box that was positioned on a shelf in the bathroom. Hofstetter was alleged to have used the concealed recording device to capture photographs of unknowing subjects whose intimate parts were exposed. The unnamed woman who'd found the camera was accompanied by several other of the dental office's female employees when she reported her unnerving discovery to local police. After his criminal practices were brought to light, Hofstetter was charged with invasion of privacy, an offense which carries a maximum sentence of one year in jail and a $2,500 fine. When news of the incident was circulated online, many were quick to point out some of the darkly ironic statements on Hofstetter's website, which touted that his office had been equipped with state-of-the-art technology without sacrificing a warm and inviting atmosphere. Number 2. Daniel Jacobi on December the 10th of 2017, an elderly woman was found unconscious inside her home in Beverly Hills, California by her two adult children. Following the arrival of emergency responders, the homeowner was pronounced dead at the scene. An autopsy subsequently determined that she'd been killed by way of strangulation. The Beverly Hills Police Department launched an investigation into the matter which led them to conclude that the victim's son, 36-year-old Daniel Jacobi, had been responsible for the murder. Although it wasn't revealed what had specifically led to Jacobi being identified as a suspect, the police did indicate that they'd relied on a combination of physical and digital evidence to make their determination. Jacobi, a prominent Southern California dentist who treated a number of celebrity patients in the past, had uploaded a commemorative Facebook post in the wake of his mother's death with a caption that read in part, Mom, I love you and miss you dearly. On February the 12th of 2018, the man was arrested and formally charged with murder. According to the findings of the police's investigation, Jacobi had fatally strangled his mother within 24 hours of the emergency services being called to her home. It was reported that the dentist's motive for committing the murder was financial in nature. During his arraignment, Jacobi entered a plea of not guilty and he was held in custody without bond while awaiting his trial. We'll be showing our video on when nurses go wrong right after number one. Stay tuned if your daily they will kill you thirst hasn't been satiated yet. Number one, Lawrence Rudolph. Pennsylvania dentist Lawrence Rudolph went on a hunting trip to Zambia with his wife, Bianca, in October of 2016. They were both described as avid hunters, and it was mentioned in later reports that they'd gone on the African safari so that Bianca would have the opportunity to kill a leopard. On the morning of October the 11th, a group of the safari's gamekeepers and scouts heard the sound of a gunshot coming from the Rudolph's cabin. Upon investigating the noise, they reportedly came upon Bianca's lifeless body lying on the ground. After she'd suffered a gunshot wound to the chest, her husband told the gamekeepers that he was in the bathroom when he'd heard Bianca's Browning 12-gauge shotgun discharge. Rudolph repeated the narrative while being questioned by local police. Zambian authorities believed his version of events, through which the dentist maintained that his wife had accidentally shot herself while packing up for their day of hunting. Rudolph was thus allowed to travel back to the United States, at which point he resumed his relationship with an unidentified mistress whom he'd allegedly been dating for years. In the weeks following his wife's untimely death, Rudolph claimed seven payouts from life insurance policies he'd taken out with multiple different companies in various states. In total, the dentist received approximately $4.8 million as a result of Bianca's passing. The FBI revealed the potentially inculpatory aspect that Rudolph had met up with another romantic partner of his in Las Vegas the day after his wife's funeral. Three years later, investigators learned that one of the employees at Rudolph's dental practice had told her co-workers that she'd been in a secret relationship with the man for nearly two decades. 
She'd also disclosed that she'd given Rudolph an ultimatum to leave his wife in the month leading up to her death. In December of 2021, the dentist was arrested in Cabo San Lucas following the culmination of a five-year investigation by the FBI. Rudolph was formally charged with foreign murder and wire fraud for allegedly gunning down his wife in order to cash out her life insurance policies and continue his relationship with his long-time mistress. Number 8. Elizabeth Wettlaufer Between 2007 and 2016, Canadian nurse Elizabeth Wettlaufer killed and injured roughly 14 people under her care. She first found employment at Care St. Care, an elderly home in Woodstock. While there, she started injecting patients with fatal doses of insulin. Her first victim was 84 years old James Wilcox, a veteran of World War II and a father of six. During her time at the home, Wedlaufer struggled with alcoholism and substance abuse. She killed at least six more people at Care St. Care before she left the facility in 2014. Some of her victims survived, and Wettlaufer would later plead guilty to attempted murder in those cases. After Kearson Care, she killed another patient and injured two others as she sporadically found work in Ontario. In 2016, she entered a drug rehabilitation program at a psychiatric hospital in Toronto, where she confessed her crimes to the staff. The police were notified and Wettlaufer was arrested. She was subsequently sentenced to eight consecutive life terms. In her confession, the woman claimed that she knew the difference between right and wrong, but added that she had uncontrollable urges. She said that God, the devil, or some other unknown force or entity wanted her to kill. Before taking her life, she could hear herself laughing and claimed that it felt like a cackling from the pit of hell. The laughter, she added, wasn't audible but rather a feeling in her chest. For her crimes, Wettlaufer is regarded as being among the worst serial killers in the history of Canada. Do you think these people died peacefully? Did they struggle at all? Um, all the people you've talked about so far died peacefully, in my opinion. And I am sorry. I'm sorry for what the families went through at the time, and I'm extremely sorry for what they're going to go through. It's awful. Number 7. Niels Hugel Judging from the total number of victims he's suspected to have claimed, former nurse Niels Hugel is the most prolific serial killer in the history of peacetime Germany. In 1999, he started work at a clinic in Oldenburg. It wasn't long before the facility started to notice a sharp increase in resuscitations and inexplicable deaths, the vast majority of which had occurred while Hugel was on duty. The nurse was constantly present in emergency situations. In fact, it was Hergel who'd injected the patients with ajmaline, sotalol, calcium chloride, or other substances. He'd done so, according to his prosecutors, out of boredom and the desire to display his resuscitation skills. In 2002, he transferred to Delmenhorst Clinic. Again, emergencies relating to arrhythmia or sudden drops in blood pressure started to spike. A police investigation was launched in 2005 after staff caught Hergel sabotaging a patient's injection with Ajmaline. Hergel was arrested and initially sentenced to life in prison for the murder of six patients. The inquiry into his activity as a nurse continued, and in 2019, he was convicted of a total of 85 murders. Further investigative efforts revealed 300 possible victims, spanning a period of 15 years. Number 6. Kimberly Clark Sainz Shortly after Kimberly Clark Sainz was hired as a nurse at a DaVita dialysis clinic in Lufkin, Texas, the facility saw a dramatic rise in patients becoming ill during treatment. A number of them had gone into cardiac arrest, which is extremely rare for dialysis patients. In April of 2008, the authorities were called to the clinic after two patients reported seeing Sainz inject bleach into patients' dialysis lines. Several syringes used by her then tested positive for bleach. When questioned by the police before the officers even mentioned the substance, Sayans claimed she'd used bleach to clean dialysis lines. Further research revealed that in April, she'd been present at every incident in which a patient had died. Moreover, her hard drive revealed Google searches concerning 
the lethality of bleach. As part of the investigation, an analytical chemist proved that the bleach had entered the patient's bloodstream, causing red blood cells to explode and release iron, which sent them into cardiac arrest. Sayans was sentenced to life, plus 60 years for killing five patients and injuring five others, although she was believed to have been involved in many other incidents. Number 5. Pieter Zelenka From May to December of 2006, Czech nurse Pieter Zelenka killed seven people under his care and attempted to murder ten others. At the time, he was working at a clinic in Havlíčkovobrod, about 60 miles southeast of Prague. Zelenka administered lethal injections in which he used heparin, a blood-thinning drug that caused massive internal bleeding. The main theory is that he killed his patients as a twisted test for doctors at the clinic, whom he didn't believe were proficient enough to discover his crimes. He confessed upon his arrest and, in February of 2008, was sentenced to life in prison. Number 4. Kristen Gilbert Massachusetts nurse Kristen Gilbert was convicted in 2001 for the murder of four patients at the Veterans Affairs Medical Center in Northampton. She had started work at the center in the late 1980s. Before long, other nurses jokingly called her the Angel of Death due to the high number of deaths that occurred on her watch. Gilbert would inject her patients intravenous bags with massive amounts of epinephrine and once they went into cardiac arrest, she'd attempt to resuscitate them. She'd create these crisis situations to display her perceived proficiency as a nurse but also to attract the attention of then-boyfriend Justin Perot. He was a Veterans Affairs police officer and hospital procedure dictated he had to be present in case of an emergency. In the midst of mounting suspicions, Gilbert left the hospital in 1996. Afterwards, she checked herself into psychiatric hospitals at least seven times. In 1998, she called in a bomb threat at the VA Medical Center in retaliation to her former colleagues and Perot. She was arrested at which point her past crimes were investigated by the police. Perot told the authorities that Gilbert had confessed the murder to him during a call from the psychiatric ward. VA staff linked Gilbert to over 300 medical emergencies and up to 350 deaths. She was only convicted for four of them and ultimately sentenced to life imprisonment. Number 3. Edson Isidoro Guimaraes In 1999, a hospital porter at the Salgado Fio Hospital in Rio de Janeiro witnessed nurse Edson Isidoro Guimaraes as he fatally injected a patient with potassium chloride. Guimaraes was arrested and several suspicious deaths were subsequently linked to him. The man who'd come to be known as the nurse of death confessed to five murders. He claimed that he'd chosen patients, mainly those suffering from AIDS, who were in irreversible comas. Guimaraes said that he was at peace with the killings as he'd spared the patients and their families of prolonged pain. He was convicted of four killings and sentenced to 76 years in prison. It's believed that from January the 1st to May the 4th of 1999, he was responsible for up to 131 victims. Rio's Secretary for Public Security suspected that money may have also been a motive for Guimaraes' crimes, as every time he reported a death to a funeral home, he was paid $60. Number 2. Jane Toppen American serial killer Jane Toppen, active from 1885 to 1901 in Massachusetts, was born Honora Kelly into a nightmarish household. Her father was an abusive alcoholic who, according to rumors of his mental instability, ultimately sewed his own eyelids shut while working as a tailor. Kelly spent a few years in an orphanage before being placed as an indentured servant in the home of the Toppen family. She took the name Jane Toppen and began training as a nurse. She would come to be known as Jolly Jane because of her positive disposition. Beyond the facade, however, lay a disturbed serial killer. Toppen experimented with morphine and atropine on sick elderly patients. She altered their prescribed doses and would get a sexual thrill from seeing them drift in and out of consciousness. Toppen fondled her victims as they died and, according to one report, looked into their eyes trying to understand the inner workings of their souls. Her killing spree continued 
after she became a private nurse. In 1901, she moved in to take care of the elderly Alden Davis after the passing of his wife. Unbeknownst to him, it was Toppen who had killed her. Within weeks, she fatally poisoned Davis, his adult daughters, and his sister. She was detected following a toxicology report from her latest victim. Toppen confessed to 31 murders but was concretely linked to 12. At one point, Toppen was quoted as saying that she wanted to have killed more people, helpless people, than any other man or woman who ever lived. Number 1. Charles Cullen During his 16-year activity as a nurse in New Jersey, Charles Cullen killed numerous patients, mainly by injecting them with insulin, digoxin, and epinephrine. Cullen dropped out of high school and after joining the Navy, passed the rigorous psychological exams necessary for working on a submarine. While he was serving aboard the Woodrow Wilson, an officer found him at the missile controls, wearing scrubs, gloves, and a surgical mask. Cullen gave no reason for his behavior. He'd be admitted to psychiatric wards on several occasions. After he was medically discharged, he started working as a nurse and murdered his first victims in 1988 at St. Barnabas. Due to a national nurse shortage, Cullen was able to move between hospitals whenever suspicions arose. He was detected in 2003 while working at the Somerset Medical Center. The police kept him under surveillance and, through a fellow nurse wearing a wire, found enough evidence for a probable cause arrest. Cullen agreed to cooperate with the authorities in exchange for them not pursuing the death penalty. He confessed to killing 40 people under his care and was given 18 consecutive life sentences. Cullen claimed that he'd overdosed terminal patients to spare them from going into cardiac or respiratory arrest. Yet, not all of his victims were terminal and many were on the mend. He also said that he'd lived his life in a fog and blacked out during most of the murders. Experts who've investigated his activity believe that he may have been responsible for 400 deaths, making him the most prolific serial killer in recorded history. Thanks for watching. Would you rather have bad breath or no front teeth for the rest of your life? Let us know in the comments section below.